Yo guys, what is going on? Got a special kind of video for you guys today. I haven't really done one of these types of tier list videos, but I mean, it's all the rage, so I guess I might as well try my hand with it. Now, if you're just looking at this and you think this list is absolutely atrocious, go ahead and share your thoughts with me down in the comments below. I'm always open to a healthy discussion, so if you see a deck that's on here that you think is just in the completely wrong place, go ahead and let me know your thoughts. And if you think I forgot some of uh, maybe one of your favorite decks or just a deck in general, uh, go ahead let me know this is definitely not every deck uh, in the bt5 meta this is just basically everything i could think of off of the top of my head and a lot of the newer uh cards and newer archetypes so let's go ahead and get into it so what i think will be pretty much the best decks the decks to beat in this upcoming format uh for starters of course we've got lord nightmon here i think this is like hands down my pick for like the deck right yellow we've seen has been picking up a lot of traction in the past format uh, with things uh, like Blinding Ray and War Greymon and Pulsemon and all of those uh, facets that just combine together to make yellow such a powerful color. Lord Nightmon does everything that this uh, deck needs and everything you want him to do. is just so beneficial for the deck. Being able to spam out, spam out any of your powerful uh, warrior Digimon including stuff like Nightmon is super powerful because you can you know play a Nightmon, get his effect on play and then go into like a London Lord Knight or a you know another uh, a slash Anjuman or just anything like that it's just so so powerful and not only that but the flexibility with either being able to bring out warriors or your level 3 Digimon to also do a ton for you stuff like Bushiagmon stuff like Lusimon stuff like Pulsemon as well as Starmons which is uh, I think that's like a game breaking level 3 uh, in my opinion so I just think all of those things combined make this deck uh, it's such a powerful offensive strategy because because you are able to swarm the field and simultaneously take out your opponent's Digimon. So I, I just think this deck is absolutely ridiculous. And then the other contenders here, we've got like a kind of like the Digiburst archetype or the Reflecimon focused, um, you know, green deck. I think Reflecimon is going to be a very powerful stun deck for multiple reasons. One, because we know green has access to some very nice Digiburst cards uh, like Grand Kawagamon, like Hercules Capuchinmon, who are also on this list, but although separately. Fleishimon introduces a whole nother meaning to the word stun. Just the fact that you can stun one of your opponent's Digimon and prevent them from attacking or blocking uh, just by using one of your Digiburst effects is super nice. And then pair that with things like Promo Palamon gives one of your Digimon jamming or maybe Weedmon to gain a memory. It's just super powerful. It's also a nice counter pick because a lot of other decks rely on their one attacking effects just like uh, Lord Nightmon. Lord Nightmon, you know, tutors out your yellow level threes via his when attacking attack effect so being able to shut that off uh, is just super powerful not only Lord Nightmon but of course like Hexablau, War Greymon, all those other dudes so being able to prevent that is super nice uh, and then we got like uh, Omnimon's Wart here just as like the uh, head of like this uh, archetype so I would just say basically any like Zwart Turbo or like any black or purple build focused on going into Zwart I just think he is such a powerful card like when I first read this card guys this card is is bonkers being able to not only um first is on digivolution effect is crazy because you can just revive any level five or lower basically level five or lower right because it's like a play cost um eight or lower purple or black digimon two of those by the way so two purple or black digimon with a cost or lower from the trash for free they get their on play effects so stuff like chimeramon uh will trigger not only do you get to do that fill up your trash but then when attacking you can bounce back a level six material you uh, you know underneath them to delete something with a play cost of 12 or less which is basically every like other level six digimon like on this list so he's just super powerful in so many ways uh and then hexablamon here another really good counter pick another really good stun card this guy like single-handedly is one of the best boss monsters in the game i think he just does everything you want a boss monster to do right he has protection he has a layer of protection where your digimon your opponent's digimon can't attack if they don't have materials he also has jamming so he himself won't die if you are swinging at your opponent's security and then he just synergizes with the whole um you know source stripping strategy of a blue deck so he's just so powerful on so many levels if you get this guy out uh against like a Lord Nightmon or against a uh, Yellow War Greymon or anything like that, it's pretty much GG. They basically, you just have to digivolve over it, like over your existing Digimon to out 
a hex of lava, but if they can go into another one, it's just, it's really difficult to play around. Um, so then we also got Yellow War Greymon, like, aside from Lord Nightmon, basically L every yellow strategy in this meta is, like, good, just because of all the generic support you have, because of things like TK and Pulsemon, and Starmons especially, so I still think that, uh, you know, Yellow War Greymon, we've seen it just absolutely destroy the BT4 meta. I still think it is a very powerful deck. Uh, the only downside is that that Lord Nightmon is just faster and does what War Greymon does better, right? Because the whole really cool combo about Yellow War Greymon is because you can pair him with something uh, like 1.5 Anjouwomon, where you can just unload your hand with Yellow Level 3s. Okay, so, you know, that's nice, and the DP reduction is nice, but Lord Nightmon does that effect inherently. You can just, you don't need an Anjouwomon to use, uh, you know, to bring out Level 3s. Not only that, but then you also have other crazy cards uh, like Nightmon and Star Mons that are just much more easily accessible in a deck like Lord Nightmon versus War Greymon. Not to say this deck is like bad by any means. I would still put it in like tier one or you know maybe even like a high 1.5 status. Uh, I still think it's very good. And in addition to that, another kind of like yellow strategy or maybe even a mixed strategy would just be any Mastamon build. I think Mastamon is just one of those cards that is just going to continuously get better with time. She didn't really do too much in the 1.5 meta, but in the BT4 meta, we've seen her being played with things like Yellow War Greymon as a supplemental level 6, uh, pair her with things like Bushi Agumon, with Tinkermon and Petermon, with Pulsemon, with Promo Gatomon. Like, there are just so many other yellow and purple cards that pair well with her and make Mastamon really, really powerful. And then we got Hercules, uh, Kapitermon Green, or just like a green control deck, you know, Nidhoggmon, and focusing on just suspending your opponent's Digimon and controlling the board state through that. I think lots of people kind of underestimate at just how powerful Hercules is. I still think he's like hands down the strongest green Digimon like in the game. I, I still think he's ridiculous and unfortunately he is a four cost but if you can look past that he's such a good counter to a lot of the prominent decks especially in the BT uh, format. I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Hercules Green just won one of the um, you know July uh, turn like the Bandai tournaments that have been going on um, like during this month the online uh, tournaments. So because it's so powerful against uh, stuff like War Greymon, because you just bring out a Hercules, suspend the War Greymon, and then it's hard for them to catch up if you get rid of it. Or it's good against things like uh, Red Yellow Security, because if you got the starter deck Kabuterimon underneath them, you can trash security cards for free. You don't have to worry about triggering a Gaia Force or anything like that. So I think he's really fantastic. And then the last pick I've got here for the tier one uh, selection is a Lilithmon or just any purple variant that is focusing on getting out option cards and abusing option cards uh, for low memory or cheap memory costs. So stuff like Purple Metal Garurumon and stuff like Purple Plutomon uh, kind of encompassed in this. Uh, I put Lilithmon here mainly because uh, with the advent of BT5 and with the existence of Omnimon's Wart, uh, and you know, that's another reason why I think Wart is so powerful, is comes like this uh, quote-unquote Lilith Loop deck, okay? If you guys don't know what this deck does, it's basically a purple deck that abuses uses Lilithmon and then you use Mega Digimon Fusion, that white option card, to go into Zwart for free, uh, you know, go into Lilithmon, get back some option cards, play your option cards for free or for like a, you know, a very cheap cost, go into Zwart for free, uh, attack with him, use his effect, bounce back Lilithmon, kill something, and then since you've got ultimates on the field where it was Zwart's on Digivolve effect, you can go Lilithmon again, add back the cards you just used. So with stuff like Jack Raid, uh, this, car this deck is just crazy, right? Lilithmon facilitates so many like loops that are just really really powerful and especially in BT6 uh, we will see that this deck it gets even more traction gets even more powerful all right so then for what I have for the 1.5 uh, slot um, I okay so I, I still think everything in this 1.5 uh, slot is very competitive and you could argue could be tier 1 but I just think every other deck I talked about in the tier 1 uh, category just has an edge in some sort of way so Imperial Dramon Blue, for example, uh, this deck is very, very good. Uh, we've seen it, you know, do pretty decently in the 1.5 as well as the BT4 meta, and it just gets better with as with you know as time goes on because we've got stuff uh, like the Blitz Omnimon out of BT5 here. So. 
He's really good because, you know, you can just, you know, swing with your Paladromons and your Dynabimons, have Jamie go into Paladromon, unsuspend them, attack multiple times, and then go into a Blitz Omnimon, finish off the game. So you can usually take out three or four security in any given turn. So it's just a very, very quick deck. Um, the problem I feel like is that there's just too many control decks that are, like, very prominent right now, like green control, you know, rough Legimon control, uh, yeah, any sort of purple option card control, Hexablau. Like, there's so many other decks that just counter Imperial Jamon. I feel like it by itself is good, but because of the way the meta is, I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I just don't think it's, like, extremely relevant. So then we've got Shine Greymon, my personal favorite deck, and while I still do think Shine Greymon is very good, and it's, again, one of those decks, you look at it, and you see all of the support that Yellow and Red are getting in the next set, and you think, like, why isn't this, like, one of the best decks, and I, I don't know, I would still argue it is a very competitive deck, however... Um, similarly to War Greymon, Lord Nightmon just does what Shine Greymon does without setup, okay? Shine Greymon, yes, does have a very high ceiling, um, however, you need a couple of turns to set up your Yellow Tamers and to set up, uh, your Shine Greymon, get all the correct cards in hand, use TK, search through your security and all that sort of stuff, but Lord Nightmon, you can just Digivolve into your level 6, vomit out your hand, go into a Valdra Arm, and that's GG. So, I just think there are so many other decks that are much faster that it's kind of hard for Shine to keep up. Um, now, I don't know necessarily how the matchups will go. Maybe Shine has a really good matchup against some of these tier 1 decks. I'm, I'm not entirely sure on that, but for the time being, I think I'll stick to putting it at the 1.5 tier uh, spot. So then, uh, we got Omnimon's Wart Defeat here, or just kind of any security control deck in general. We've seen the red-yellow security be, be very prominent in the, uh, you know, past couple sets, mainly uh, 1.5 and BT4, but I still do think that security control as a whole is very powerful because there are plenty of decks that just don't know how to play around it, that don't have good matchups against it, um, and, you know, stuff like Omnimon's Wart Defeat, just add another, like, you know, tool that they can use to out your board. Zord Defeat is arguably like the best security Digimon. You just play him for free and then he has a sweet on deletion effect. He has 13,000 DP so it's really really powerful and if you're constantly stacking your security with things like Magna Dramon and Magna Anjumon and Seraphimon and stuff like that, I think Zwart Defeat can be kind of a blowout card. Plus, he's one of the few cards that does actually kill Tamers if you end up Digivolving him. Um, but we'll have to see just how impactful he'll be. So then we got Shoutmon, or I would say like uh, the Blitz Red deck. The goal of this deck is just to basically build up into your level 6s and swing with the new Blitz ability, which allows you to uh, attack your opponent uh, even if your memory has passed over to their turn. So you can stack your, um, you know, Digivolution cards with stuff like Shoutmon D-Cross, um, with things like Zeke Raymon on the Shoutmon, giving him the ability to act, uh, attack unsuspended Digimon, or boosting a security attack, making him check multiple cards, and simultaneously being able to clear the board. Um, Shoutmon D-Cross lets you delete any Digimon, or, uh, you know, a certain number of Digimon up to the number of Zeke Raymons and Omni um, Shoutmons in his material. Uh, those Digimon do have to be 5,000 or less, but that encompasses, you know, a lot of level 3s and level 4, so it actually is pretty good against deck that spam a lot, such as Lord Nightmon, um, or Mastmon maybe. Um, so I still do think he's a very, very powerful card, and just the whole Blitz mechanic in general can win you the early game if your opponent's not ready for it, and you can take out two, three security cards within the first couple of turns, it can be pretty devastating. So then we've got, uh, I put Omnimon here, just any sort of, like, Omnimon deck in general. So we used to see, uh, Omnimon Red as a pretty prominent deck in the 1.5 meta. Basically, the goal there was that you just played a bunch of Vanillas, and then you would just Digivolve on up into things like Alteress and and things like uh, BT1 Omnimon, and they're really powerful, right? Those cards are still very good, even in this meta, so I still think with all the support, um, you know, red and blue decks are getting with the Searcher Agumons and the uh, Garurumon and the Greymon that gain back the memory if you evolve them onto an Agumon uh, or Gabumon or whatever, and then we got stuff like Nokia, and, and you know, all these support cards that support, like, the Garurumon-Greymon decks, I still 
think we might see a resurgence of like Omnimon focused red and blue decks and then we've got stuff like Ty and Matt who give Omnimons uh, you know an extra security check so that's really really powerful uh, I still do think all of the Omnimons are very very good cards um, even the BT1 and you know Ultra S and stuff those guys can win you games so I still think they're very good uh, and then we got a Grand Koagamon or just green OTK here I think maybe as we see you know Reflishimon come out and you know gain prominence that people might start shifting away from the OTK version of the deck and go towards like a more control focused green build and while I do think the control version is better I still think the OTK version can be quite scary being able to go into Grand Koagamon like turn two and then hitting your opponent for three security and then go into Chaos Mon killing something and then checking the rest of their security is still very scary and I I don't think people should sleep on green OTK uh, while it might be outshined by you know its other variants I still do think it's a very prominent and powerful deck so then lastly we've got a chaos gallantmon purple over here now I don't think chaos gallantmon is as powerful as Lilithmon or Plutomon or any of those like option card focused decks just because the ability to play stuff like Trump Sword and Hell's Gate uh, for free or reduced cost is just super super powerful and then pair that with stuff like Omnimon's War and you're already ready to go uh, with another level 6 with a powerful on evolve effect I still do think Chaos Gallantmon is a very powerful card and the ability to just he's he's a Chimera Mon on Digivolve right you can just digi uh, delete any level 5 Digimon on your opponent's side of the field in a vacuum I don't think it's extremely powerful but when you pair him with stuff like the new uh, Growlmon and the new Black War Growlmon and Geomon I think it it all starts to come together, right? Imagine that you Digivolve into Chaos Gallantmon for four, you kill your Geomon, kill an opponent's level five Digimon, Geomon gives you a memory, so then now you're back to zero, you can swing with the uh, Chaos Gallimon, delete the Geomon that you just brought back with Chaos's effect, gain another memory, unsuspend the Chaos Gallimon, and then the Growlmon will give you security attack plus one. So that you're hitting like four security in, in that ideal scenario, right? So I, I do think when you get set up uh, with his, you know, uh, effects, like the various inherited effects and stuff, I do think it can be very powerful. Uh, but again, I don't think it's probably not going to be as played as the option card focused decks. At least that's just my opinion. Uh, could be wrong there but so for the tier 2 decks I think these decks are just blatantly like not as good as any of the other ones I've talked about so far so first of all we got like a black metal guru mon or just like um, any sort of like more aggressive focused black deck focused on like the reboot ability uh, I do think with the advent of black war Greymon from the dash packs or, or whatever the promo packs were from the uh, last set from BD4 uh, we saw more of a shift towards the aggressive uh, you know black decks and I do think they are pretty decent I just don't think like if you look at this black metal guru mon right what does he do he just on digivolve you like digiburst too I think he kills something with like a seven cost or less or something uh, and then if you don't you trash the top card of your opponent's security which is a pretty decent effect but he just doesn't do that much by himself right if you okay if you have the toy agumon with the reboot ability and then Greymon giving you jamming and then middle Greymon giving you an extra security check all right maybe now we're in business uh but I just don't think like this card is like particularly amazing and I don't really think uh we'll get any particularly fantastic black like aggressive Digimon until we get to like Gankumon and stuff in BT6 um again just my opinion but I I just don't think it's as good as like some of the other decks in the meta and then we got um all force here all Force, of course, is one of those decks uh, from, you know, the 1.5 set that uh, was very... Uh, well, I don't even want to say it was ever, like, very powerful, but it does have its moments when you can get set up with a couple of blue tamers you can just swing multiple times you know you've got stuff like Aerovidramon uh, that gives him jamming and then you've got stuff like Rina uh, and Ty that helps you either you know gain a thousand attack or you know get, give you more draw power I do think all force can steal some games because lots of people aren't prepared for it and then we'll get more support in BT6 as well as you know with the new all force starter deck but until then uh, I just think other decks do what all force wants to do just a little bit like better or maybe like faster right Imperial Dramon and all force kind of want to do the same thing just you know constant security checks putting pressure on your opponent that way Imperial Dramon I feel like is just 
maybe a little bit better. Um, and then you've also got stuff like Blitz Red, who just, again, does the same thing, but then also has that board control aspect with stuff like Shoutmon, and then, you know, um, you have the constant searchers with things like the level 3 Shoutmon, and then the, the BT5 Agumon as well. Uh, I just don't think All Force is quite... Um, as good because it is pretty offensive, but then it doesn't have a lot to fall back on. It doesn't have hardly any removal, so um, that's just my two cents on that. Then we've got stuff like Ancient Garurumon, who I do think this card by itself is extremely powerful, right? Um, especially in BT6, <laughs> when we get uh, Agum uh, Gabumon Bond of Friendship, uh, I think Ancient Garurumon will be definitely like a really good deck. Like It'll be a really powerful deck. However, until then, um, it's just a little bit too hefty of a cost for, you know, how little it does. Even when you pair it with something like the promo Lobomon, so you can effectively go Lobomon for two, uh, draw a card, Digivolve into Ancient Gurumon, draw another, and then, you know, for one, Digivolve straight into Ancient Gurumon, you get two swings off of that. I just don't think it's enough to be able to, like, go into two swings and then, like, like get rid of your level six your boss monster just to like chip a little bit away at your opponent's security like i said there are just other decks that do what ancient garumon and like these these rapid uh strike kind of like decks like all force and ancient garumon like there, there's just other strategies that can accomplish that without having to like, you know, play a level 6 that's a 5 to evolve, right? <laughs> so, I, I don't know. Like, Ancient Gurumon, again, with some other cards we'll get in the future, I think he is very good, uh, but there's just not a lot of other ways to run him at the moment because we don't have stuff uh, like Bond of Friendship, we don't have stuff like the new uh, Matt Ishida or Blue Memory Boost or any of those cards. Um, I just don't think it'll be super prominent. Uh, then we've got what maybe is one of the most anticipated decks out of BT5 is Armageddon or kind of like the Diaboromon black build. I think this deck can definitely compete. I think it can definitely steal some games. Uh, the thing is, though, it has a lot of bad matchups, and it just doesn't have that much removal either, right? Black is known for not having removal in the first place, but they do have a lot of the digivolving effects, which, of course, uh, you know, Armageddonmon has their own uh, themed the digivolving effects. I think, it, like, Catastrophe Cannon is one, and then there's another one that's, like, an 8 cost that digivolves by 4, and then you get to play some tokens as well. So, it can be pretty good when you are, you know, set up with your Diaboromon, and you've got, like, maybe your Arata on the field, and then spamming tokens, and then just hitting for multiple security checks, you know, the promo Diabormon, usually you can get two or three checks out of him. Armageddonmon has Rush, so you can play him immediately for a three cost most of the times, and then just hit your opponent's security for 15,000, so it is quite the aggressive deck, and I do think you can steal some games, um, but like I said, it has bad matchups, <laughs> notably Hexablau, uh, absolutely destroys this deck, um, you know, Reflishimon, preventing your opponent from attacking with, you know, maybe your Diabormons or anything, preventing the token spawning, or any sort Sort of yellow deck that can just outright get rid of your Digimon before you even go into a Diaboromon. Like I said, I just think it has a lot of bad matchups and unfortunately the, all the pieces aren't there, right? Maybe we'll see Diabormon be like tier one at a later point in the TCG's lifetime, but I just don't think that time is now. So then, uh, the other decks we got here are Rookie Rush. So Rookie Rush is one of those decks that, again, has technically, like, gotten better with time, but I think the problem with this is that there are just so many counters in the metagame. Basically, every deck has an answer to Rookie Rush, right? Reflishimon, you can just prevent them from attacking. Red Yellow Security Control, you play stuff like Lightning Paw and, you know, Spiral Masquerade, maybe. War Greymon or Lord Nightmon, you can just play Starmons that are, you know, summon your boss monster and attack once and their whole field is cleared and stuff like green control okay need hogmon literally destroys rookie rush right and then you've got other cards like takumi aiba you know the white tamer who just straight up says that if you attack with a level three digimon you're gonna lose a memory so and then you got stuff like chaos galmon that can just constantly nuke the board um you know so there's just so many counters to rookie rush and i think um unfortunately there are not enough like ways to abuse like the low cost rookies and you know constantly recycle your hand and like gain memory um that you know the rookie rush just doesn't have that good of a time playing against the, basically any of the meta decks right uh so i i just think it's more of a meta problem rather than like the actual deck's fault then we've got ragnalord ragnalord has not really ever been like tier one it's always been like one of those decks that you still got to respect like ragnalord mon is a crazy card 
and it's a very scary card. Um, but I don't think they have gotten really anything crazy out of this set that has just helped the deck drastically. Uh, and I do think it just takes too long to build up into your boss monster and it requires a lot of materials to like actually do everything you want to do if you're playing like a red version you need like all of the materials to get you know the security attack plus two or three or whatever you're trying to go for if you're playing the black version you need those materials to de-digivolve your opponent's digimon and stuff like that but then you've got cards like hexablau that just don't care you've got cards like hell's gate and all the purple and yellow removal that like okay if you actually go into a ragnarok mon i'll just kill it and you've wasted the last three turns just trying to build up into that guy that I outed with like a single card, right? So I think there are a lot of counters to Ragnarok and it's just not even extremely impactful when you do finally go into him. Okay, then for the last row here, we've just got like a assortment of decks that I would consider more rogue, uh, more like quote-unquote fun decks that might still have a chance to compete um, but are just blatantly like not as good. Maybe they either lack a win condition, lack some sort of removal, too inconsistent, um, all those sort of things. So we've got like Cranium on here, Black Blockers. Uh, I think Black as a defensive deck is still pretty decent, you know, stuff like the Reboot or Greymon. Um, but there's just a lot of ways to circumvent Cranium on specifically. Lots of effects that don't destroy or don't delete, I should say, like DP reduction, and you can strip his sources with Hexablau, or you can suspend him with Hercules, Kabu Termon, and attack over him. So there's just lots of counters to that. And I do think it's a little bit of a slow deck. Uh, like, all you do is just basically build up a wall and then hope your opponent doesn't out it. So I don't think it's going to be meta by, like, any means. And then we've got uh, D Brigade as well. Another black deck, which is uh, focused on, you know, getting around your... Getting out your Dark Dramon and just filling up your trash uh, with the Command Dramons and stuff like that. Uh, this deck didn't really do anything in BT4, and I don't really expect it to do uh, much of anything in BT5. We do get a new Command Dramon. I believe it's, like, a... I think he's a blocker, right? Uh, but, again, I just don't think it'll be enough to save this deck. Then we got everyone's favorite Rusty Boy, Rust Tyrannomon. Uh, this card, this card is just, like, not good. Like, I'll be honest, as a win condition, he just requires, like, you, the stars literally need to align in order for Rust Tyrannomon to pull off any sort of combos, right? You need, like, you need to have Taiga on field, you have to go into Rust Tyrannomon without passing your turn, or if you do pass your turn, he has to survive until next turn, and then he's only 11,000, so you're gonna have to have, like, at least a couple of, you know, materials underneath them, provided they don't get stripped or he doesn't get deleted in his prior stages so all of that needs to happen and then what do you get you get a 11,000 Digimon that has piercing and then you can maybe unsuspend him if you're lucky right so Hercules is literally just better in every way and there's just like and you don't have to like run those you know green tamers that are bricks sometimes and, and all this other stuff so unfortunately <laughs> I just don't think this card good <laughs> as much as I like him uh, and then we got ancient Greymon here uh, hopefully this might change uh, with cards being revealed from uh, BT7 Next Adventure at some point soon, maybe. I don't know. Uh, so supposedly we're going to get Emperor Greymon Susano Mon, so maybe that those guys will make him better. But until then, uh, Ancient Greymon is just one of those types of like one-punch decks. You just build up into uh, an Ancient Greymon uh, and then just hit your opponent for like three security checks. But like other than that, it, like that's literally the only thing it does, <laughs> right? Like you either go into Ancient Greymon or you go into Aldemon and then you check security uh, and that's it and if your opponent outs your ancient grandma on that that sucks like uh, so I just don't think he's good for those reasons and then of course because he's a five cost and he does float so that's kind of cool but like it's just not enough I feel like uh, and then we got Dan Devimon uh, who is a really, like, he became much better, like, I think he's actually playable now, like, he became much better now that we got the, uh, promo Demi Devimon, the one that lets you revive him from trash if you have seven or more Devimon, so I do think you can cheese some people with this and, you know, to control the, your opponent's hand, uh, by, you know, uh, if they delete him, you'll, they'll trash two cards out of their hand, and then every time they attack you, they'll lose the security card as well, uh, but again, I just don't think you, like, you require too much setup and then when you do get that set up, it just, he just doesn't do enough. So, I don't know. I just don't think he's that good. Uh, and then we got uh, Omnimon uh, X Antibody here. I honestly don't even know, like, if any decks, like, actually run this card. I've, like, <laughs> like I've, I've not seen a single Japanese list, like, run this card. Maybe it's good. I, I do think this card is good, like, just by itself. I do think this card is good. 
uh, he does have the when attacking you can delete anything on your opponent's field who has DP less than or equal to them so that's basically like any Digimon on the field right so it's like he's 15,000 so that could be basically any level 7 or lower uh, the issue is that he's a 6 cost to evolve so you're never going to be like evolve into Omnimon X antibody and then swing get rid of the problematic Digimon like you just rather go into like BT1 Omnimon and just kill it outright or go in if you're gonna try to swing just go into like BT5 Omnimon just swing their security for maybe multiple checks um, and the fact that you can evolve onto an Omnimon for three is really cool but like would you really just give up your BT Omnimon, BT1 Omnimon, or your Omnimon Ultra S, or your uh, Blitz Omnimon for, like, this guy? Maybe not. Uh, I could just be completely wrong. Maybe this card is, like, really fantastic, and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, I just think there's, like, not enough, uh, you know, synergy with existing decks. Like, all he does is just kill things when he attacks, but, like, he doesn't even have any uh, layers of protection like the Blitz Omnimon does, and I don't know. I just don't think he's that good. And then lastly, uh, we got Malamiotismon here as just like a very, like, very, very rogue option. Like, this deck is, like, not good. I don't know, I don't even know if anyone plays this deck. If you do play this deck, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I'm just, like, bad mouthing your deck. Uh, it can do some cool things, especially with stuff like Zwart. Like, now that you have Zwart, if you, you know, play this deck, you could play Zwart and it just automatically makes it better, you know, bring back, like, an Arakenimon or a Mummymon or something like that. Uh, but I just, yeah, this deck just doesn't do anything. It's like, his boss monster is cool, okay? You can you know gain some memory on your opponent's turn he has piercing that's that's lit uh but like i said he's just he's just a it just breaks this deck breaks and like you have to have a suitable amount of cards and trash if you're trying to use mummy mon and you have to have him as well as our kenny mon in hand usually past turn when you summon him anyway so i don't know he's just not the best to me um but yeah guys so that is basically every deck on this list uh if i did miss any prominent decks that you think i you want to hear me talk about or anything like that please let me know uh because like i said this is definitely not all of them um and if you disagree with anything or maybe if you do agree by his some off chance i i doubt that but if you do you know want to let me know your thoughts on any of the current decks or any of the future decks coming out in set five please let me know comment down below and let me know what you think let's have a good discussion on what the meta is going to be like but guys that's going to be the video thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time